All right, in this video, I'm going to be working linear algebra homework 3.1, you know, talking about consistent systems, what are the possibilities for the solution sets, actually finding the solution sets, um, number of dependent variables, independent variables, that whole relationship there. All right, so I'm going to start by copying the first system. Okay, so the first problem, I'm going to, you know, transform the system to an augmented matrix, and I'm going to row reduce. Uh, but rather than waste your time by showing you all the row reduction steps, I'm just going to row reduce it off to the side and give you the result. All right, so there it is. You can see, you know, it wasn't the best row reduction ever. I did have to go into the fraction world, but uh, it wasn't the worst either, honestly. So we have it here, and what I'm going to do is, I'm going, okay, I've got transform the augmented matrix to reduce this one form. Okay, I'm going to make note of the number of pivots, um, and maybe I'll kind of just like underline those in blue right here. Um, right here and right there. Those are my pivots. They're leading ones. Okay, I had a total of three variables and two pivots, so I think I'm going to have one independent variable. So I'm going to write down the solution space. So x1 plus x2 equals 5 sixths. And 3 equals 2 thirds. So I'm going to solve for x1 in terms of x2. x1 is equal to 5 over 6 minus x2. x2 can be whatever it wants, and x3 is 2 thirds. So you could say, you know, the vector that we're solving for is x equals what, uh, 5 sixths minus x2, x2, and 2 thirds. And then because it asked me to, I'm going to note the number of pivots. That was 2. The number of independent variables was 1. Over here it said 1 free variable. That says x squared. I meant to say x2. And then the total number of variables is 3. Notice that. All right, okay, there's part B for number one. I'm just going to copy the matrix real quick. Won't make you watch that. There it is. Now I'm going to row reduce it. All right, that wasn't my favorite one ever, but you know, we got that. And, you know, okay, I feel a little bad. And didn't check these before I put them on the homework. They, neither of them were coming back with full blown integers everywhere, but that's all right. We gotta be ready for that too. So I'm going to interpret my solution space, right? I'm going to say x1 plus 4x3 equals 6 and a half. And I can say x2 minus x3 equals negative 1 and a half. And I can say x4 equals 0 0.5. Okay, so that's nice. It looks like x3 can be whatever it wants. Okay, because again, you know, my pivots are right here, here, and there. Because they are leading ones and they have cleared out their whole column. All right, so x1 equals 6.5 minus 4x3. x2 equals x3 minus 1.5. x3 can be whatever it wants x4 is 0.5. Okay. So, you know, if I wanted to write this as a set of all vectors, so the solution space is the set of all x, for which x equals 6.5 minus 4x3, x3 minus 1.5, x3, and 0.5. Notice that there was, let's see, there were three pivots. How many independent variables? Uh, just the one independent variable here. And there was a total of four variables in the system. Again, adding up the complementary somehow. We'll be investigating for the rest of the course. All right, determine all possibilities for the solution set of the system of linear equations described. Okay, so, so the first one is a three by four homogeneous. OK, 
Okay, as we discussed in class, a uh, system with fewer variable or with fewer equations than variables, the only options are no solution or infinitely many solutions. And this is a homogeneous system, and all homogeneous systems are consistent. So this means infinitely many solutions. Which I might just call infinite, because there's a bunch of these. To be homogeneous of 4 and 5, that's the exact same thing. That's going to be infinite, uh, because it's you know fewer equations and variables. For the exact same reason as, as before. To C is a system of three equations in two known in two unknowns. So that's a three by two system. That's like three lines in a plane, right? You could have a unique solution. You could have no solution. No solution. And infinite solutions. Alright, 4 and 3, this is the exact same, uh, so you could have unique, so 4 planes in space, they could all come together at one point, uh, they could not, right, or, you know, they could all run into each other in some line, they could make like some sort of pinwheel looking shape. And that would be infinitely many solutions. All right, homogeneous of three and two unknowns, that is going to have, okay, so three by two homogeneous. Well, a homogeneous system always is consistent, so no solution is out. But since there's three by two, okay, homogeneous in the three by two case means you have three lines and they all go through the origin. Now, they could all three be the same line, or, you know, they could all meet up at the origin. So you could have a unique solution or infinitely many solutions, but not no solutions. Okay, F, homogeneous, four and three. That is the exact same as the previous one. I should have really kind of proofread this before I just snipped from the textbook, but yeah, your options are unique and infinite for the exact same reasons as on E. Flip this over real quick. All right. All right, so G. All right, a two by three system with a non-trivial solution. All right, so if you have fewer equations than variables, okay, so this is two planes in space, then you either have no solution or infinitely many solutions. But I already know that I have a non-trivial solution, so I know that I don't have no solution. That means I have to have infinitely many solutions. That was the type of question I was expecting. I had a couple of layers to them. System of three equations and four unknowns with one, again, one known with a non-trivial solution. Uh, that's going to be infinitely many solutions. All right, then. I homogeneous two by two All right so that's like two lines in the plane that both happen to go through the origin there's at least the one solution like that could be the only one or they could be the same line and that would be infinitely many and so then okay, to J here homogeneous three by three exactly the same yeah, you're, then 
just fine if you just done every other problem in this set. And I wish I just copied every other problem in the set. Homogeneous, this is what I was kind of waiting for. Homogeneous two by two. with a non-trivial solution, that means, okay, if you've got a homogeneous system, it's consistent, so no solution is out. And you also know that the zero vector is a solution to every homogeneous system, meaning that I've got the zero vector and a non-trivial solution, meaning I have to have infinitely many solutions. Infinitely many solutions, I'll just I was saying infinite before, so let's continue saying that. All right, uh, 2L was looking like 3 by 3. That's homogeneous, same exact thing. All right, so a 3 by 3 homogeneous with non-trivial solution will also have infinitely many solutions. Any homogeneous system that has non-trivial solutions will have infinitely many solutions. So, okay. um, because if you got one, you got, then you've also got the zero solution, the trivial solution, then more than one is automatically infinitely many in this class, right? All right, so I did all of those. Find the values of A for which the system has non-trivial solutions. Okay, we can do that. Uh, I'm just gonna go straight to the augmented matrix. One, negative one, three. 2, negative 1, 4, 1, 1, A. Augmented with a bunch of zeros. All right, so 3. So we know this is a homogeneous system, so it's going to have at least the trivial solution, but we want to know, like, what can we do to A to make sure it has non-trivial solutions. So we're going to start row reducing. And I'm going to add one copy of row 1 to row 2. Okay, so I'll have 0, 1, that's convenient, 2, 0. I don't really like that. Okay, then I'm going to subtract 3 copies of row 1 from row 3. So that's 3 minus 3 is 0. 4 minus 6 is negative 2. And then I'll have A minus 3 ones. Okay, I need to remember to make more room for down here because it's going to get... Um, Actually, no, I guess it shouldn't be too bad because I'm only have to add two down here. All right. And yeah. So my next step, I don't really care about uh, the rest of it. I'm really just trying to maneuver on A. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add two of row two to row three. So I'll get one, zero, zero, two, one, and then zero because I'm trying to kill that off. Now I'm adding two of these down here, so I'm adding four, so this is going to be a plus one. And yeah, I think we are far enough that we can just, let's think about how this is going to play out. Okay, um, this one, if a plus one is zero, then I'll have a row of all zeros, and then I will be able to get rid of this two right here, but then I'll, I'll necessarily have junk in here because I won't be able to clear out that column. But if a plus one is not zero, then I could just divide by a plus one, get a one here, use that to clear out the rest of this column, then I could use this one to clear that out, I'd have a unique solution that was just zero, zero, zero. Okay. I'd have, yeah, only the trivial solution. I want non-trivial solutions, so I need a plus one equals zero which leads me to believe that A is negative one, and that will give me non-trivial solutions. And then the fourth one is determine conditions on the three Bs that guarantee the system is consistent. Is it possible for there to be a unique solution? All right, so I'm gonna copy, or I'm gonna make myself an augmented matrix, three, two, seven. Negative one, zero, negative one. And then we are augmenting with B1, B2, and B3. All right, what we're going to learn, you know, as we move forward, is that certain properties about these three vectors here are going to ensure that either there's a unique solution or there's, like, 
in the case that there's not a unique solution, it's either infinitely many or no solution. So I expect if there's going to be non uh to guarantee that the system is consistent, it's not going to reduce down to a unique to a unique solution system where down the main diagonal we just have ones. Okay, so I'm going to actually do this row reduction because it's got variables in it. And so I'm going to subtract row one from row two. And all right, then I will have row one or row three minus three row ones is zero. Seven minus nine is negative two. And then, all right, negative one plus three is positive two. Okay, that's, that's a good sign. B3, let's see, plus minus three B1. All right, yeah. Now, this has not changed. This is still B1. And you know if I was to say, well, wait a second, I just doubled this row to get here. I'm going to have the equation 2b2 minus 2b1 equals b3 minus 3b1. And that's fine. You can definitely work with that. Um, but I'm going to go just a little step farther and show you that it's actually the same thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply this one by negative 2 and add it down there. And that's going to clear off that, uh, at least this row. So... So over here I'll have B1, here I'll still have two, B2 minus B1. And then I added negative two of these, so negative two B2 plus two B1, because I took row two and multiplied it by negative two, plus B3 minus three B1, that's gonna have to equal zero. Which if you think about what I said in terms of this being or yeah, this down, this one down here being twice that one, you could go and rearrange this algebraically because we know this is going to have to equal zero. Now, before I do that, I want to talk about, okay, what's going to happen if I go to kill the rest of this off? Are there more conditions that have to be met? And I don't think that there are, right? Because when I go and I add this back up here, and I'm going to have a pivot here for sure. And I'm going to have that cleared out once this is, becomes a one. I can use that to clear it out. And, or maybe not. I can just clear it out preemptively. But either way, I'm going to have two pivots, meaning I'm going to have one independent variable in the system. So, And maybe y'all haven't thought all the way around that yet. But I'm not going to need more than one equation to describe my solution space here. Or the, describe the conditions on B that will guarantee the system is consistent. So the system is consistent if and only if this is zero, right? This can't be anything non-zero because then we would have zero, 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 non-zero. We know that means inconsistent. So I just need, um, let's add these all together, uh, negative B1 minus 2B2 plus B3 needs to equal zero. And now you could say that B3 equals B1 plus 2B2, or B1 equals 2B2 minus B3. However you want to say it, it doesn't matter. It's all the same. It's just this equivalent condition on B1, B2, and B3 that guarantee that the system will be consistent. And that's all I got for you for this video.